Finally, it's Buzz Lightyear time from Takara Tomi, and I will be comparing it with Thingway's signature collection Buzz Lightyear so that you can decide which one suits you better. Let's go! Hey guys, I am ZW. Here we have a simple box with an image of Buzz in the center. Spoiler, the toy inside does not look as good as this Buzz. A very different take from what Thingway has teased us with. A spaceship that is similar but not accurate to the movie. A complaint for another day. Opening the front panel will reveal some poses that this bus is advertised to be able to pose, which we will be putting to the test to make sure that they are not scamming us. We have him talking to the fake communicator in Toy Story 1, shooting his very deadly laser in Toy Story 2. Probably a utility belt bus since and this bus has already been enlightened in the first movie. Dancing Mexican bus in Toy Story 3 and flying bus in the last movie. Similar to his Woody counterpart, his eyes can move, but we all know that it's not necessarily a good thing. This bus came with no accessories, only a stand, which I had to use because he could not, for the love of God, stand on his own. Great design. It also came with some stickers for your name and also for Andy. And Andy only, because who the f is born? Wish you all the worst, bitch. Body. The height of both buzzers are similar, if not identical. This is what it looks like beside my custom Takara Tomi Woody and my movie accurate Jesse. Now we compare both buzzers from the bottom up. Right from the bat, something interesting. The movable side panel next to his anchors. If you're wondering, what's the point? You're not alone. I guess it's for the sideway rotating anchor so that he could be posed in some sort of battle stance. But I really don't see it happening much because of this face. Who smiles during a battle, right? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Back to the feet. Same goes for the articulated toes. Probably not the most useful feature. And that's all for the movement that the feet has. No upwards or sideways rivers, which funny enough, are what the signature version provided and in my opinion, is totally more practical than a useless sideways anchor rotation. Moving up to the legs, we can see very distinctly and disgustingly lots of holes on the Takara Tomi's version, while those screws were technically hidden for the signatures. Good job, Zengkui! Now the articulation. Takara's bar's legs can extend slightly downwards to provide more space for rotating in all directions, or it is more restricted for the signatures because it clearly doesn't do its stretches and doesn't have the pull down feature. For the knees, Takara's bars can bend more than 90 degrees, while signatures can only bend maximum 90 degrees. However, the signatures can swivel from side to side, something that Takara's bars could not. And if you think about it, that is what allows the signature bars to stand on its own. So the question is, would you rather have a super rotatable leg or a bus who can stand on his own? Your choice. So far the signature bus looks so much better, so let's hope that Takara Tomi picks up their game for the top half. Both buzzers have a 360 rotation along the hips, but Signature's has a ratchet app crunch while the Takara's has nothing. And when it comes to electronics, Thinkway is the clear winner because Takaras has nothing. You can't press any of the buttons, so no laser lights, no popping of the wings, you have to open them up on your own, no blinking lights, and by the way, if you think that's bad, the wing storage is also wrong. It's supposed to flip downwards, then inwards, but Takaras can only be slotted back in manually. Everything that a Takara bus doesn't have, the signature bus has them all. All the buttons can be pressed, you have the red laser, popping wings with alternate blinking lights and they start the wings right. Need I say more? Well... That is one obvious flaw that the signature bus has and it's the stiff arm. This is as far as it goes. Up, down, sideways. If you want to touch the buttons on the other end, you can't. The wrist is not ball jointed and cannot rotate at all. This is where the Takara Tomi's buzz shines. It starts up high and goes all the way down to close the gap. A whopping 360 degrees rotation of the entire shoulder, another 360 bicep rotation, and as if that's not enough, 
yet another 360 ball jointed wrist rotation. And the cherry on top are these articulated fingers that is inaccurate but a nice touch. So are you still on a fence on which one to get? Here's something that will help you decide. Takara's bars can reach the buttons on the other side because in addition to the crazy articulation in the arms, they decided to add not one, not two, but three segments of extensions to the arms and that helped the arms to reach the other side so that he can do crazy poses like Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. I've got an AWOL Space Ranger. Bitácora espacial. Me he despertado del hipersueño en un planeta extraño. To infinity and beyond! Of course, it's not always rainbows and butterflies. There is always a catch. Or maybe I'm just too particular. But this only looks presentable at certain angles. If you view it from another angle, he looks like a gorilla. Oh, and even with these buff arms, he cannot touch the laser button. So the image we saw earlier, debunked. Another thing that was sacrificed in the name of articulation is this black dome, which is made shallower for greater movement. There are also a lot of holes exposed, and it's just nasty. Even though I do appreciate the ball jointed wrist on the Takara's bars, it wasn't well done. It's supposed to be ball jointed, but the ball is too small. Yes, I'm absolutely nitpicking here, but if you look at the movie, the size of the signature's wrist is actually accurate just that it's not articulated. And that would be fixed if the people at Takara Tomi have bigger ball joints. Speaking of bigger things, the green markings on the hands should have been bigger on both Takara and Signature's buzz. And the shade of the green is not accurate. Not to mention that they both do not have any glow-in-the-dark effect. Finally, we have reached the main event, that is the face. Both head sculpts are not bad. You can reduce his level of creepiness by a lot if you put some care into posing his eyeballs. The difference between Buzz and Woody is that Woody's eyelids were on the face itself and not painted directly on the moving eyeballs. So it's gonna be a little bit more challenging when it comes to making Buzz look natural. And his neck is a little flimsy. His skin tone is a little too pale, so I might repaint it. Ultimately, if you like to pose your figures, Takara Tomi's bars is a pretty good option. Articulation is insane and with the stand, I'm sure you can recreate some really crazy poses safely. But if you prefer your bars to talk and have similar functions to the movie, get the Signature Collections bars. Here's my Takara Woody review and Takara Woody mod here. Stay tuned and goodbye.